Hi, in this video, I'm going to try to cover the most common mistakes that programmers make in exception handling in C Sharp, the exceptions, the unexpected errors which your program can encounter during execution, and these are the most common mistakes that programmers make. So I'm going to show some code examples that cover some of these common mistakes, and we're going to discuss all of them briefly. Okay, let's start with the first code example, which demonstrates the overusing exceptions for control flow common mistake, which is also linked to ignoring the performance considerations. So let's take a look at my code. I have a single method which is called parse integer, and it simply takes a string input, tries to parse it, and if it succeeds, it returns our integer, and if it fails, it is going to return minus one. Now, this is not the correct way to code this method. Why? Because we are using an exception to handle a normal control flaw. If you do that, this is going to have a performance impact. Obviously, if you call this method only once, you might not even see the performance impact, but imagine if you call this method in a loop 100,000 times, the performance impact could be considerable. So let's see how we can change our method. And instead of using an exception, we're going to use code to handle the normal control flow of our program. So let's do that now. I'm going to declare my result and we're going to use try parse instead of an exception. So I'm going to use try parse and we have input out result. And if this succeeds, I'm going to return result. And if this fails, I'm going to return minus one as before. Okay, so by using try parse, we can handle the case where parsing fails and we're not going to rely on exception for control flow. You need to remember that you should reserve exceptions for truly unexpected situations and you should use your code to handle normal control flow. And now let's take a look at the next common mistake people make when they handle exceptions in C-sharp using empty cache blocks. So let me create a single method. I'm going to call it save user preferences. It is going to take a single string parameter. All our method does is write the string to file. So let's do that. All right, all text, I'm going to call my file, let's say, user preferences text. And this is the mistake many programmers make. They use empty cache block, which might sound like a good idea. If an exception happens here, if something goes wrong, when you try to write to file, you're going to use the cache block to catch the exception and move on with your program, but this introduces several problems. Let's say something happens here, your disk is full, so you cannot write to file, or you don't have sufficient permissions to write to file, or the file is locked. No matter what, what the cause is, your program is going to fail silently, meaning that you're not going to get any detail as to why this has failed. So what can you do? Well, you can obviously print the exception message to console. Let's say you can print an error occurred when writing to file or whatever message you want to. Okay, let's me print and you simply print the message to the console and even better you can actually log the exception you can use a custom logger that uh, logs your messages to file or to database and if you log the exception then you're going to have all the details and obviously you can also use a message box to show the error message to your users. I mean, this is a console application, but if you have a WinForms application or so WPF application, 
or whatever, you can simply show, let's say, the same message right here that we have here and to inform the user that something went wrong and the user settings, the preferences were not correctly written to file. So again, why is it bad to use empty cache block? Because you're introducing silent failure, loss of error information, you can uh, obviously create inconsistent state and you can also miss opportunity for recovery if you use empty cache block. Now let's take a look at the next common mistake programmers make when they handle exceptions in C-Sharp and this is catching generic exceptions. So let me create a single method which is going to take a connection string input parameter and is going to try to open database connection. So let's do that quickly. I'm going to go for connection equals new SQL connection, connection string and I'm going to try to open the connection and we're going to handle the exception if it occurs I'm going to simply use right line and print a message on error occurred And the exception message, I mean, obviously you should be using the using statement in your real code, but this is just an example. So let's do that quickly. So what we are doing here, we're catching all exceptions in our single catch block. And why is this bad idea? And we shouldn't be always catching generic exceptions. Well, there are several reasons for that. I mean, if an exception happens right here, you can react differently to the different type of exception. For example, if there is a timeout, you can actually, let's say, do several retries. And if there's another exception, let's say SQL exception, you might actually try to close and reopen the database connection. So depending on the type of exception, you can actually code your application to react differently and Let's see what is the proper way to handle this. Instead of catching the generic exception, we're going to try to catch more specific exceptions. So let's start with the first one. Let's say SQL exception, SQL exception. And right here, we're going to try to reopen the connection and we're going to catch another exception let's say invalid operation exception And again, you need to decide how to reopen, how to handle this ex exception. You can log it and you can also take some actions depending on the exception details. And finally, we're going to handle the generic exception and log our message. And again, ideally, you're going to use a logger to log the exception details. The next common mistake is swallowing exceptions. What does that mean? Well, if you remember the empty catch block, this is exactly a perfect example of swallowing an exception, meaning you're catching it and you're doing nothing with it. But it also can mean that you're doing something very minimal, which does not help you understand the exception or handle it in any way. The next common mistake programmers make when they handle exceptions is the improper use of the finally block. The finally block should be kept simple and it is designed to clean up resources. 
you also should avoid writing code in your finally block which can throw an exception on its own. So let's take a look at a very quick example of proper and improper use of the finally block. So let's do that quickly. Okay. So in our catch block, we are going to simply lock the exception with our exception message and error occurred and in our finally block this is on improper use of the finally block i'm going to just add my code here and explain why okay so why is this bad if the connection close throws an exception let's say there's a network issue or an error in the connection stake it can mask the original exception from the try catch block and which is going to be difficult to diagnose the root cause of this error so what is a better approach well you can actually use a try catch block in your finally block and yeah let me move this up and we're going to log a different message which says failed to close the connection and again we're going to print the exception message one more time the finally block should ideally contain a very simple code which does your cleanup let's say another quick example if you have a windows uh, desktop application and this method is doing some do some long work typically you would use your method to let's call this a start button you're going to disable it so once the user clicks this button you're going to display some message that we are connecting to an external api we're performing some work that is going to take several seconds so you're obviously going to give your users some feedback but you're also going to disable the button that has been clicked so the user cannot keep clicking on that button and in your finally block you can actually use it to enable the button back and this means that even if there's an exception right here the finally block is always going to be executed and you're going to make sure that the button is again enabled and the user can click it if they want to or you can obviously in other methods perform some cleanup operations in your final block okay the next common mistake people make when they handle exceptions with c sharp is they ignore the performance considerations in c sharp the exceptions are quite expensive in terms of performance and if you overuse them especially for normal program flow control this could degrade your program performance so let me show you a quick example we are creating random numbers between 0 and 5 and we're going to see how the two approaches when we divide by 0 the first one is using the divide by 0 exception we're going to catch the exception and the second one we are checking for 0 and we're going to time the executions of each one of these ways and see what the difference is again this is my code we have an array of integers and they're going to be numbers from 0 to 4 we are randomly generating them and in the first way we're going to use the divide by 0 exception and right here we're going to handle the exception i'm just going to leave a comment here for now and again in the different way where we check for zero i'm going to just leave a comment for now but you can also obviously use whatever message you want to print or do something else anyway let's use the stopwatch to time these two executions and see if there is any difference between using an exception and using a check for zero for our normal program flow control so let's run the program and you can see that using exceptions took 16,900 
89 milliseconds and checking for zero took, took zero milliseconds, which means that the checking for zero is the proper way to do this. And especially when you are executing a loop, you can see this can actually degrade your program's performance. Okay, let me briefly discuss the retardowing exceptions incorrectly. And let's take a look at some very basic code example. Let's say you have your method and you have a try catch block. So what syntax should you use and why? If you use the throw x, what is going to happen? And if you use the throw, what is going to happen? Well, the correct way is to use the throw syntax. And this is why if you use the throw x, the stack trace is going to be reset and the original context of where the exception was thrown is going to be lost. So instead of throw x, you should be using throw. And now let's quickly discuss the failing to catch exceptions in a synchronous code. I might have to create a separate video since this is a very interesting topic. If you don't properly catch the exceptions in your asynchronous code, this can actually lead to unhandled exceptions which may crash the applications since the exceptions can uh, propagate up the code stack and bypass your traditional track catch blocks. And this can cause obviously unexpected behavior. So you should always await your asynchronous method executions and deal with the exceptions accordingly. And that was all from me for today. Thank you for watching.